So the Chiefs just got two major pieces of their defense back today, and while they may not see instant preseason action, this is great news for KC as they gear up for the season opener against a very tough opponent in the Ravens. So I've got to talk about that, running back Carson Steele wanting to be the team's Swiss Army knife, Tony returning to practice, and more. But first, how about those? All right, first up, I want to discuss the controversial kickoff that happened in the Chiefs-Jags preseason game involving McCole Hardman that was ultimately ruled a safety. After the game, so Saturday night, it was reported that per Andy Reid and the officials after the game, the call was wrong and it should have not been ruled a safety since the ball landed in the end zone. That should have been a dead ball and the result would therefore have been a touchback. Well, Matt Derrick of Chiefs Digest basically spent all day Sunday, so yesterday, researching the new rules as well as talking with multiple people in the know about it, and the ruling of a safety was actually indeed correct. Andy Reid got this confused with the old rules, but if the ball hits the end zone and bounces back into the field of play, it's now a live ball and must be returned. So next time, in order to avoid something like this from happening again, Daenerik Prince simply needs to catch the ball in the end zone and either take it out or kneel down if he's fully in the end zone. Instead, he let it fly over his head and assumed it would be a touchback. But once it bounced back into the field of play, McColl tried to think quick and that cost the team two points. Thankfully, it's just a preseason game and ultimately doesn't matter. But this was quite the confusing ordeal with people around the league giving mixed thoughts and opinions about the new rules. And it's safe to say that the league has some kinks to work out and everyone needs to get on the same page before the start of the regular season. Andy Reid did also confirm today during his presser that it was a live ball. The rules have changed and it was probably a good thing this happened in preseason because now everyone is aware of what to do next time. Next up, the Chiefs had a lighter 10-10-10 practice today. Again, that's a lighter practice where players don't dress out in full pads. A non-contact day where the team cycles through 10 offensive plays, 10 defensive plays, and 10 minutes of special teams work. I'll get into some standouts and highlights from today's practice because there's definitely some things worth noting. Um, but it's more of a mental day than anything else. And before we even get into that, I want to talk about players who were not there, players who didn't practice, and a couple of very important players who returned. But first, I need to point out that for whatever reason, it appeared that Travis Kelsey woke up like three minutes before today's practice, which is kind of hilarious. Anyway, let's talk players who were absent from today's practice. Those were as follows. Wide receiver Hollywood Brown, clavicle safety Brian Cook, excused absence because Andy Reid said he's got a baby on the way, so congrats to him and uh, his significant other for that. Then running back Clyde edwards Lair was out with an illness. Offensive lineman McCade Metier uh, is dealing with a knee issue. I'll get to that in a bit. And then defensive end BJ Thompson was also not there due to still being on the NFI list. Hollywood Brown, let's talk him for a minute here. He sustained a pretty rare clavicle dislocation closer to his sternum during the first play of the Jags preseason game. And this injury, by the way, is so rare that it's only happened to three receivers, from what I can find in my research, since the year 2012. Danny Amendola missed three games due to this injury in 2012. Then Tyreek Hill missed four games in 2019. Then Hollywood Brown will miss maybe week one, maybe week one and two of the regular season. I would say he most likely does not play week one against the Ravens, but then the Chiefs have 10 days between games, so week two against the Bengals is certainly a possibility. Andy Reid spoke about Hollywood's injury today with the media, saying they were able to get the joint back in place without surgery, which is positive. He's now back in KC, and they will see how things go with him basically as time goes on. Then Andy gave an update on offensive lineman McCade Metier, who was feared to have torn his ACL in the preseason game against the Jags, but Big Red said it was actually his MCL. The positive about that is there's no surgery required, and he even made it seem like McCade's return could be pretty quick, saying they will see how it goes over the next few days, though it could take longer than that. Well, if McCade is able to somehow return to practice this week or maybe next, that would indicate the MCL tear is pretty minor, like a grade one. So it seems like major crisis was averted with McCade for now because a torn ACL would have had him out the entire season. Now, as far as the players who were seen at practice but didn't participate, those were defensive end Charles Minahue, who's still rehabbing the torn ACL he had repaired back in February. He's on the pup. 
Wide receiver Jaron Hayek, he's been dealing with a shoulder injury for a week or more of camp so far. Defensive tackle Chris Jones, who sustained a shoulder injury of his own, Andy Reid said last week it was a stinger, a tweak of his shoulder. Offensive tackle Wanye Morris, who was on the ground in lots of pain after a play late last week during practice, with the entire team taking a knee. It was initially a scary sight. You maybe were fearing the worst that it could be a season ender. However, he was able to walk off on his own and eventually came back into practice, participating in a more limited capacity. He didn't play in Saturday's game either, but the good news here is that Andy Reid said Wanye is dealing with a bone bruise. To be clear, it probably hurts like hell, but there's no damage to the ligaments in there or anything like that, which is a great sign. Now, speaking of great signs, two very important players for the defense returned to work today, and those were linebacker Nick Bolton, who banged up his left elbow a couple weeks ago during a camp practice. It was like a few days into camp when the pads came on, as well as safety Justin Reed. Justin has been on the NFI list since the start of training camp due to a quad injury he sustained just before camp started. So this is his first camp practice of 2024. That's great news for the defense. Spag said in a presser last week, we really need him out there, and it looks like he'll be getting his wish. Now, I highly doubt Justin Reed plays during a single preseason game, as we first need to see if he will even fully participate in a padded practice first, because again, today is a lighter no-contact day. But the safety room just got a major boost, or will soon get a major boost, upon Justin Reed's return. As far as Bolton's elbow goes, I would guess the same thing for him. They will ease him back into practices, and I'm not sure we will see Bolton out there in an actual preseason game or not. Next up, the third player to return to work was wide receiver Kadarius Toney. Toney spent a few days absent due to an ankle tweak, then missed a day or two last week due to what Andy Reid described as his back tightening up on him. And this is an important week for Tony, who is definitely not 100% safe to make the Chiefs 53-man roster this year, despite carrying a $2.5 million cap hit being on the last year of his deal. It does help his case a bit that Hollywood Brown is injured, but it's still not a sure thing. Now, Andy Reid was actually asked about Tony, and Big Red said that while Tony was out there today working, it's all a matter of consistency. There's a ton of competition, and you've got to be on your game if you want to make the roster. He said he says that to all the guys, every receiver out there, but yeah, he made it seem like Tony is not exempt from that. Dan Harms of RGR was at camp today sharing his observations and noted that Tony did catch a pass that actually deflected off of Rashi Rice, who was the intended receiver, and Tony's quick reflexes helped him come up with the catch himself. So hey, let's go. Some positive Tony news here from today's practice. Carson Wentz also tried to connect with Tony in the end zone, but was undercut by Jalen Watson, who came down with the INT. Some other things worth noting about today's practice is that Justin Ross, Sky Moore, and McCole Hardman rotated in with Xavier Worthy and Rashi Rice during 11-on-11 11 11 with the first-team offense early on, but Tony must have worked his way in there eventually as well because a pass intended for Rice that was tipped or deflected and Tony caught definitely would have been with the first-team offense. Then, with both Wanye Morris and McCade Mattire out with injuries, the second-team O-line today looked as follows. Lucas Niang at left tackle, followed by C.J. Hansen at left guard, Hunter Norzat at center, Mike Caliendo at right guard, and then finally, Ethan Driscoll at right tackle. And at first, I was a little surprised to see Mike Caliendo over at right guard with the second-team offense, considering he's been with the first team at left guard pretty much exclusively, but with today being a non-padded practice, Joe Tooney was the guy getting work in with the first-team offense. On the subject of the offensive line, Andy Reid shared that Kingsley Suamata'ia had a productive start in his limited looks this preseason and will need to build upon that. He likes what he's seen from him so far. Another guy we liked in his limited usage preseason week one, arguably the standout of the entire offense, was the running back fullback hybrid, Carson Steele. He was another guy seen checking in with the first team offense at some point during today's practice, uh, which makes sense given his rising stock. In fact, Steele said today that his phone was blowing up after the game with his family being so excited for him uh, after that first touchdown and all that good stuff. However, he's not dwelling on a past performance, but is rather focused on the game this weekend. So far, Pacheco and Clyde have been very helpful to him throughout camp, helping him learn the plays, which also helped him click in with the running back room. He's just staying around them, trying to keep up and soak in all the details. Steele then went on to say that his main goal coming into camp was trying to be a Swiss Army knife type of guy for the team. Wherever they needed to put him is where he'd get in and work. Fullback, blocking, catching out of the backfield, not just being able to run the ball. But with him being a bigger bodied back, 
third and short is another place he could be useful, which is actually something he showed in that preseason game. He moved the chains on second and one via a short run as well as scoring that touchdown in the red zone that was like at the one yard line. Carson admitted he's never been a true fullback before, primarily being a running back in college, but he's been used in a similar role on select packages back in his college days. He also hasn't played a lot of special teams in recent years, but is honing in on that as well, knowing that's another way he needs to contribute in order to earn himself a spot on the roster. Andy Reid spoke about Steele today, saying, you saw what he looks like as a running back last Saturday, and he's also learning the fullback spot as needed. That's something Noah Gray did last year, but maybe that could be Steele this year. Overall, Steele had a productive day in his first game and will need to be a good special teams player, stay aggressive like he's doing right now on top of running the ball well. I honestly think right now Steele is making the 53-man roster, or at least his odds went up. They're pretty good at the moment, and this might be helped by the fact that he has a pet alligator named Croc EJ. Well, that might not help at all, but it's pretty freaking awesome, and because of that, one of his favorite nicknames so far for him at camp has been Crocodile. The favorite one I would say is Crocodile, because my, my pet alligator, uh... I would say that's probably the big one uh, coming into it. Yeah, I got him um, second and third grade probably. It's a Christmas present. And yeah, so I've had him a little while now and he's probably, probably around four or five feet. I named him Crocky J when I was younger because I, I thought it sounded a little better. But uh, yeah, he's, I would say probably 90 to 100 pounds. Yeah, he's in a big aquarium back home, so. This isn't the best transition, but someone who was all over the place on Saturday, like a crocodile in the water, sorry, I tried, was the rookie safety Jaden Hicks. Hicks thought there were more plays he could have made out there, but was content with his performance as he tied for first among all defenders and solo tackles. However, he said he needs to play hard through the whistle on every play, noting he got a little tired near the end of the game. One guy who wishes he had more playing time last Saturday uh, was the rookie wideout Xavier Worthy. He said it was good to get some experience out there. He was nervous at first, but once he was out there on the field running routes, he settled in pretty quickly. The first play of the game that ended up with Hollywood catching the ball and sadly getting injured was actually intended for Xavier Worthy, but the defense rolled their coverage over and took away the play, so Worthy said he was kind of upset about that one. He also wanted to get at least one punt return in on Saturday, but... Coaches wouldn't let him go out there. However, his goal is to get out there and return a punt sometime soon. He's getting more ingrained in the playbook with his comfortability level rising each day. Then regarding Hollywood Brown getting injured, Worthy said he checked on Hollywood after the game, saying he's in pretty good spirits, all things considered. He's just ready to get back out there and get to work, and they are gonna miss his speed out there on offense and can't wait to get him back. And I can't wait to see what Saturday holds for preseason week two's matchup against the Lions. Before we get to that, Casey has three more practices this week, then training camp is officially over. That means the regular season is literally right around the corner, which is the best news I can possibly hear as a big NFL fan. And the Chiefs are chasing the freaking 3 P. So until next time, which is after tomorrow's practice, I'll be back with another video. Let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.